Hello, welcome to the video that goes along with lesson five, which covers chapter four in the beginner's book. In this video, we want to introduce you to a few concepts that go along with decisions so you can work better with the chapter. This is the program that was covered in the last lesson. Remember, it was a for loop that created 10 rectangles. Let's try it out again just to see what happens. Notice that it produced 10 rectangles on the screen. Let's go back to the program. What we want to do in this case is put in a decision structure. We can use an if statement here that says if, and in this case we're going to use x. Remember x was a random number between 0 and 600. If it was 300 or left, that means that it was on the left side of the screen. So if we say if x was less than 300, that means that the random number generated where we want to put the rectangle is on the left side of the screen. If it is on the left side of the screen, we're going to do a rectangle. Otherwise, else, we're going to draw a circle. We're going to draw the circle in exactly the same position, x, y, with the same width and height. And then we'll end the if. Everything that goes in here between the if and the else will happen if x is true. Everything here will happen if x is, is, if x is not less than 300, if the if statement is false. If we run it now, what we'll see is all the items on the left hand of the screen will be rectangles. Notice we had an error there. Let's do it again. When I ran it, we get the error. It says an if without end if. And in that's fact true, there is no end if because I made a mistake and only typed if end instead of end if. If we run the program again, we see all the items on the left hand side of the screen were in fact rectangles, while the items on the right side were circles. Now, they're not really circles, they're ellipses because the width and the height are different. Let's change the width and height to both 60. If we run it again, we get circles on the right side, squares on the left side. Every time we run it, we get items in a different position. Let's try to make some examples that will make this a little clearer. Remember, if x was less than 300, it meant that the number generated for position the rectangle was on the left side of the screen. If we change this to x is greater than 300, it means the rectangles will now be on the right side of the screen while the circles are on the left. And in fact, it does that. If we change this to y, and perhaps make it 200, then when y is greater than 200, that is on the bottom side of the screen, we'll draw rectangles. So we'll see rectangles on the bottom and circles on the top. Again, if we change this to less than instead of greater than, now if it's less than, meaning it's on the top, we'll see rectangles, circles on the bottom. Let's try it again and see the shapes in a different position. Notice the circles are always on the bottom. We could do this with like a hundred different shapes, and you'll notice all the circles will be on the bottom, all the squares on the top. I hope this helped you get started with this chapter, but do read the chapter. There are many more things in the chapter that you'll find exciting and interesting.